Hello everyone, it's Super Duper Boy here. So recently the first two episodes of the highly anticipated Obi-Wan Kenobi show were released. This was probably the most hyped piece of Star Wars media since Clone Wars Season 7. Maybe even since The Force Awakens. But now that it's out, what do people think? Well, from what I've seen, there have been some mixed reactions. For every bit of praise for the show, there's been a decent amount of criticism. Now, some of these critiques I totally understand or agree with, but some other things people are saying about the show I don't really see the issue with. So in this video, I'm going to be giving my opinions and talking about why I honestly think these first two episodes have been really, really good. But before I talk about this show, I need to talk about another show, which is The Mandalorian Season 2.5. Jokes aside, The Book of Boba Fett, in a lot of ways, was pretty good. I really liked the story with the Tusken Raiders and the world building on Tatooine. And although a lot of people had a problem with it, I think Boba Fett evolving into a more honest character who is finding his own way is actually pretty interesting. The problem though, is the joke I made earlier about the Mandalorian, jokes no longer aside. I don't know who thought it was a good idea to have not one but two Mandalorian episodes in a row where Boba Fett doesn't show up. Seriously, the second half of the show, it just felt like Boba Fett's series was getting invaded by all these other characters. Ahsoka is one of my favorite Star Wars characters, maybe even my top favorite, but I don't see why she has to be in the show when her character has nothing to do with who's supposed to be the protagonist. Alright now, you're probably wondering, what does this all have to do with Kenobi? Well, what I think is the biggest problem with the Book of Boba Fett is handled a lot better in this new show. One of the things a lot of people seem to have mixed opinions on is that Leia has a huge role in the show. Lots of people are confused on why her plot is such a large focus and are saying it messes with continuity, which I'll get to later. But honestly, it's one of my favorite aspects of the show because from just watching the trailers, it seemed like the show would just be about Obi-Wan running away from the Inquisitors for six episodes, but Leia's inclusion makes things a lot more interesting. Because even though we know everything is going to be fine in the end, it makes the show a lot more fun to watch because Kenobi doesn't know that. And also, if he was just protecting Luke the whole time, he'd have to stay on Tatooine, which is pretty boring, but now the story can go wherever it wants. Speaking of going to other planets, it's just really great to see Alderaan. The sequel trilogy and Mandalorian were just stuck in Outer Rim planets, so it's nice to see some more high-tech fantasy prequel-style worlds. And Alderaan being in the show ties into what I was saying about the Book of Boba Fett. Because what could have happened is that we get all of Episode 1 dedicated to Kenobi, and then Episode 2 randomly is all about shenanigans on Alderaan. That would have been the first two episodes if it was like the Book of Boa Fett, but instead we see Alderaan halfway into the first episode, and by the end of the episode, we understand Leia's inclusion and why it matters to the main story with Obi-Wan. The weirdest thing I've heard said is that Leia's inclusion is filler, which doesn't make sense to me because it's literally the main plot. Another thing people seem to have a near universal problem with was the main villain, Reva. Saying that she was annoying or took up too much screen time, so I'm probably saying something a lot of people disagree with when I say that I think she's a pretty good villain. They could have had the Inquisitors just be one-dimensional bad guys who only exist to be objects for Kenobi to fight. So the fact that she argues with the other Inquisitors makes things a lot more dynamic. And how she knows Darth Vader is Anakin is an interesting plot point. She's in no way a perfect villain, but we still have four more episodes to see where her character goes. Speaking of that scene where Obi-Wan finds out Anakin, or Darth Vader now, is still alive, it is one of Ewan McGregor's best acted moments in the show. Which is the perfect segue to finally talking about who the show is named after, Obi-Wan Kenobi. What they did with his character surprised me, but it makes total sense. He doesn't want to help Leia at first, he's a broken and sad man who feels like he failed Anakin and the galaxy. And the scene with Uncle Owen is the best moment to represent that, and does a good job at developing not just Obi-Wan, but also Owen as characters, who was a pretty flat character before this scene. This hopelessness isn't really what we expect to see from Obi-Wan, but I think it's valuable character development, and in just the first episode you get an idea of what the show is about for Obi-Wan as a character. His transformation from a sad lost Jedi to who he was in A New Hope. And I'm glad we got to spend some time with his day-to-day -day life and seeing how Revenge of the Sith has affected him. Seeing how he has adapted to his new life and you could even say that he's a simple man trying to make his way through the galaxy. And really it's just fun to see Ewan McGregor playing Obi-Wan again. It feels like he's hardly changed or aged since 2005. 
but I don't need to explain to you too much why Obi-Wan is such a great character. What matters is that so far his writing is good and they haven't ruined his character. Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on the show itself so far and why some of the criticisms I disagree with. I think there's a lot to like about the show so far instead of hyper focusing on silly scenes where a 10 year old Leia is able to outrun adults like Star Wars hasn't been goofy before. By the way I think the actress does a great job at portraying a young Leia which if you remember earlier I mentioned how her inclusion may create some issues in continuity and how it's kind of weird how in A New Hope she says to Obi-Wan you served my father in the Clone Wars and not that you saved me from kidnappers nine years ago. Now yes, maybe this creates some continuity issues for A New Hope, but that movie is 45 years old and was created before there was any other pieces of Star Wars lore. As important as avoiding plot holes is, Star Wars stories shouldn't be held back by strictly following the frankly outdated lore of A New Hope. Also in this show, she only knows him as Ben, not Obi-Wan, so they could actually find a way to have it make sense. Just like how it's never actually said that the fight on Mustafar was Obi-Wan and Darth Vader's last duel before A New Hope, so I think we're all excited to see what happens there. Anyways, that is all I have for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you all next time. Peace out.